Hello, hello. Happy Sunday. All right, so I am going to craft our new Easter hip hop tear tray set. It's super, super cute. Um, hopefully you can hear me and we're all set up and good to go. Um, all right, let's see. All right, say hi if you're here. Um, let me know that you can hear me, please, because when I use two devices, <laughs> it never fails that, um, something is not working correctly. So, uh, just comment, say hi and comment and let me know that you can hear me. Yes or no. Yes or no. You can hear me. Um, all right. Let me grab some aluminum foil. I like to use aluminum foil when I'm crafting because the paint does not absorb, um, into like if you use paper or something so i just have these like little sheets i got them at i don't know costco it's like a big pack that they would use in the restaurants but um that is what i'm using okay so if you are a member of our tier tray um, membership please check your text and in the vip group um regarding this kit because there is a special offer for you as a member. Um, if you're not a member and you want to join our membership, then you can go to um, resticglitter.com and look under subscription. So, um, all right, so we're going to craft this and um, I may have to jump off um, midway, but we're going to craft until I have to stop. But this is super cute and it can be mixed in with the set that we had from last year. So um, let me post here the link if you're interested in um, grabbing this one. Um, okay, let's see. Hi, Laura. Hi, um, Mama Kreider. Am, am I saying your last name wrong? Um, let's see. Okay, so that's there, and let me take this banner off. Okay, all right, so this set is super cute, and I'm going to show it to you really quick. So you have this little Easter um, word cut out here. We have our um, Easter bunny holding the carrot. We have our hip-hop Easter bunny sign here with this cute adorable this bunny is so so cute I just I love all these bunnies and then we have this sign that says some bunny um, loves you so super super cute this also makes really cute little gift for somebody if you want to give them for that too all right so what do I want to paint first I think I'm gonna do the bunny with the carrot first on this one. All right, so I'm gonna take um, that screen off so that you can just see what it is that I'm actually um, crafting here. And um, sorry, I'm kind of like, I feel like lost and dazed and confused today. <laughs> A lot going on around here. So much going on. And I can't wait to share with you some awesome stuff that's going on, but it's going to have to wait. Okay, let me get my white paint. So like I said, I like to use this aluminum foil. And I'm going to be using a lot of white. White. So what is everyone up to today? Anybody else um, crafting? Hi, Deb. Oh, hi, Kay. All 
All right, so we got that. My green. All right. And I need some pink for the ears. You are painting an Easter door hanger. Fun. Is it one of ours or is it another one that you had? Um, Laura says you're working on your Hello Sunshine. Yay. Make sure y'all post the pictures. And um, if it's a tear tray, post it in the tear tray. If it's another one of our items, please always post it in the um, craft and share group. That is That group is open for anyone to join the craft and share group and that's really where for you to go and brag about the stuff that you have done because I like to see what y'all like to do okay so I like to put my sticky tape down and then put my um, pieces so that and the inside ears are going to be pink this is all gonna be white here we don't have to paint the back because it's all getting glued together so that can go to the side and then we have our pieces here so I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the green first So if you haven't purchased one of our kits before, um, it's really, really easy to paint because all the pieces, um, for the most part, are individual. So it makes it really easy to come back and paint and then glue it all together. Sometimes when you buy um, these you know, craft items in the big box store. It's already glued together. And then you have to work around that. And that makes it really, really hard in my opinion. So, um, all of these are already put together. For you, I mean, sorry, they're not put together for you is what I'm trying to say. I, see, when I paint, I go to a different, <laughs> I'm like in a la la land right now. All right, so I'm going to mix a little bit of white in here to kind of just give it some shading. I'm going to do a little bit of, I don't know if y'all can't see. I don't have aluminum in there because it's kind of bright, but I'm going to mix in some dark, uh, lighter green. The best way to shade is honestly practice. I mean, I don't really have a specific technique. I just keep make sure my paint is still wet and I blend until I like the look um, thank you whoever just placed an order um, I blend until I'm happy with the look that I got
But the key is, for me, is to make sure that your paint is wet if you want to blend. I think I'm gonna grab a little bit darker green too, just so I can add some of that in. Can y'all see if it's okay? Is the lighting okay? Or is it too dark? It's hard to tell from my end. This bunny is similar to the one that's on our Happy Easter door hanger. It's just so cute. I love bunnies. So, so cute. And yellow is also a good one to mix with green for highlighting and shading. If your paint is starting to get dry or starting to dry, I'm telling y'all, y'all, I'm cannot talk today. Um, then just dip your brush in some water. And if you get paint in the little engraved lines, just use a sharp tool and gently drag it out while it's still wet. That is the key, is while it's still wet. All right, and then once that's dry, I will come back and do a little bit more um, shading on there. Okay. Let's 
Okay, I'm going to do the carrot, which is orange. And I don't need to worry about like this little spot or down here because there's pieces that get glued on that cover that. So don't need to worry about being careful on that aspect. I'm concentrating, y'all. Sorry. <laughs> I am concentrating. It's typically why I don't go live crafting too much because I get so into what I'm doing that um, I forget that I'm live and it's like quiet time. <laughs> I needed to paint this and I thought I would show y'all because it's so cute. So, so cute. Is anybody else on spring break this week? And if so, what are you doing for spring break? All right, I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll come back and see what I need to do for that. Now on the bunny, you'll see it has the eyes that are engraved. So when you're going over those parts, you wanna make sure you have very, very little paint on your sponge. So if you can see, I'm working from the outside in so that I have very, very little paint and you don't wanna to push too hard And I'm just gently working around the eyes.
I need to play some music, but I can't when you're on these apps because sometimes you get kicked off. Usually, um, I like to play a lot of music to um, entertain me. Let's see. I'm going to let some of that dry for a second. Let's read the comments. Let me go back. Where did you get the little tool you are to get the paint out of the score mark? This tool right here. Um, this is what's called a weeding tool. So it has a sharp point down here. It's used for vinyl. Um, I got this at Dollar Tree. They have some on Amazon, which I think I have some linked in my Amazon shop. But this one um, I got at Dollar Tree. And I probably need to get a new one because it's full of paint for that. Um, let's see. Laura says no spring break. <laughs> no spring break. Yeah, we're not doing much. Well, my dog, my oldest is on a cruise. And then we're going to do some local stuff with the youngest. Marcia says, what kind of brushes are you using? Flat or round? You make it look so easy to do the lines and such. Okay, so I'm going to tell you, my favorite brushes are Crayola, which some of them I don't have in here, and I wish I did because they're in the sink. But Crayola is my favorite um, if you can see, it's actually the Crayola brand. I do have these linked in my Amazon shop so you can see all the different ones that I use. The other ones, I also have these linked. Um, this is an artist brush. Let me take that off. And I don't know if you can see the brand. And this came with tons of, I say tons, um, it came with one, two, Probably six, seven, or maybe even eight. I don't know um, if some are in the, in, uh, by the sink. But these I really like too. And those are the two that I use the most. Is those, the white artist ones. And then the um, Crayola ones. And then the sponges, of course, is what I really like to use. And paint markers. Those are my go-to. I have a ton of brushes. Um, like... I have a ton. This is not even all of them. And those are the ones that I go to the most that I like to use. Um, and they're, they're flat and round. So honestly, like I said, I don't really have a, um, like a technique except that I just get into what I'm doing and I just start blending and painting and I just, I just go with it until I like what I like. <laughs> but the Crayola brushes are by far my favorite so far. Um, let's see, Laura says, when you sponge on the paint, do you have to do several layers? I know the wood likes to suck with the paint, so it's curious. Yes, so like the white one here, I kind of did two layers already, but I'm gonna go back and do another layer. The white that I'm using is not my favorite. Um, this is what I'm using right now. Sometimes this paint can be watery. The white is not my favorite. The apple barrel white, I really like, and I need to go get some more. But um, this one is good for when you wanna mix colors, blend colors, or, um, or you're just gonna have to do a few coats. So you just have to be, you know, some paints come out real watery and some of the colors of theirs are okay and some are not. So it really just, it really just depends, but okay. So I think this is ready for a second coat. And however many coats you do is up to you. So um, it depends on how you want your paint to look. So if I wanted this to be um, a little bit lighter, the bunny, then I could have probably been done. But I want her to be pretty white. So I think this coat will be fine. All 
All right, so I still have some white on my um, sponge, very little, very little. And I'm just going to dab it around the edges to give it a little bit more shading. And like I said, I'm probably not going to be able to finish this whole kit. Um, I'm probably going to have to jump off soon. Okay. All right. So I think some of these pieces are done for the way that I want them. I also like to use gray for shading as well. So I'm going to put some gray on my paper. And when I say you want to dab off the paint, I mean you want this to be pretty dry. Okay, when you're doing this technique, you do not need a lot because you're just trying to shade along the edge. And I'm not dabbing down, I'm dabbing to the side. So on my computer, like my screen looks really dark, so I hope it's not for y'all. I really hope it's not. Let me see. Well, I guess that would help. I had the the brightness down. Well, there you go, Joanne. That's exactly why. All right, and I'm going to do a little bit on the bunny. And all of this takes practice. So the more you do it, because I can tell you, like, there's times where it doesn't come out right, and I have to go back, and I just add some paint over it and fix it. So that's a good thing. You can always sand it, paint it back. But the more you practice, the better it'll be. Okay. So my bunny there is done. That is done. Oh, I need to shade these. And however much detail you put into your pieces, that is up to you. So sometimes I like to add a good amount of detail, sometimes I don't. So that's personal preference. Um, you know what, let me grab, let me grab those other brushes real quick because I'm going to need them. So one second please. Okay, so these are the other ones from um, Crayola that I, I like. And probably this red one I use a lot. So I think these came in a four pack. 
if I remember correctly. Again, I have them linked on my Amazon. So you can definitely check those out. I don't know if you can hear the boys, but they're playing they're playing games. When I say the boys, I mean my youngest and uh, my oldest, which is also known as my husband. <laughs> They're playing some some games. All right. So I'm pretty happy with that. And it's still a little wet. But I think I can start gluing it together so that we can and then you just line it up if you're gonna use super glue before you push down make sure you are lined up. If you're not used to super glue, I suggest using wood glue. Hello, Sandy. Thanks for joining. And see the little hands will just cover up those little spots so you don't even see any of that. Super, super cute. Oh my goodness. So cute. Now, on the glue, so I, this has a little applicator that I can add to the end to make it come out smaller. But we're, I didn't do that. So you can just, if you have it, you know, you're using super glue, just lightly dab it on a paper towel and then put it on and it will prevent it from oozing out. All right, so that piece is done and I will come back here in just a minute and I'm gonna add some detail with my uh, with my marker. So I'm gonna put that to the side to let that piece dry more before I do that. Hello, Linda. Hi, Lori. Thank you, thank you. All right, so what are we going to do next? Let's see. Let's do, how about we do this next? 
All right, and so for this one, let's do a little shading. So I'm going to do turquoise, pink, purple. Hi, Darlene. Okay, don't forget, if y'all are a member of the um, tier tray, check your text, check the VIP group. Don't miss out on the post about this new kit and if you have last year's kit you can definitely um, put these together would be super super cute all right let me think how i want to do this all right i'm going to use one sponge and we are going to do I like to sometimes work upside down too. <laughs> All right. Now th this has a lot of the score lines, okay? So you're going to tap very lightly. And I'm just blending. So I have a blue. I started with the green. And then it's shading into the blue. Can you all see that? I don't know if it's coming across correctly.
Hi, Lisa. Again, y'all, I'm sorry. I'm just so into my craft. I'm just like focused. <laughs> so if you have questions, ask me and then I will answer them for you. And when doing blending like this, like I'm using a sponge and I'm using feather like movements. So I'm barely pushing on the wood. And you can definitely do the blending with um, a paintbrush. So if I want it to come up here and blend a little bit more, you just want to be careful over the scored lines that you don't have too much paint. Thank you, whoever just placed an order. I appreciate it. Okay, let's see. Darlene says, when you are shading like this, are you using a separate sponge for each color? Yes. So, um, you can see for the blue and the green, I use the same. So, I kind of did the green on one side, the blue on the other. They are going to mix, but... Um, by keeping one on the other, then you can blend them together because you do want them to fade into each other if you can. The pink and purple, the same. The orange, the orange I just did orange with a little bit of white mixed in on there. So yes, I do use the same uh, sponge for the most part. You can use separate if you want to keep them separate as well. Great questions. All right, now, okay, let me do this one with a brush so that you can see. So this one I'm gonna do yellow. Like I said, you have to work a little care more careful with a paintbrush because you don't want to get too much of the paint, like I just did right there, in, in the lines. So again, I'm working with very feather-like movements. When there's scored lines like this, I prefer the sponge over the paintbrush. If there are no scored lines, then I prefer the paintbrush. 
So it just depends. But I'm going to come back with the sponge because I'm not getting the coverage. Now, um, for our tier tray box this month, the subscription, I'm going to show y'all when we do our live crafting, I am going to show y'all how to shade with a brush on the, on the beehive. So you can see. Thank you, thank you, whoever just ordered. I can't see the names right now, but if you're on here, thank you, thank you. All right, let's see. I'm going to do a little bit of yellow and white. Um, hello and welcome. Uh, no, this is just one of our kits that anybody can purchase. Um, if you join to get this month's box, it's going to be the beehive. The, I mean, not the beehive. Well, yes, there is a beehive, but it's going to be the, um, Um, honeybee, the honeybee set. That's what is in the March box. So the, the theme for, let's see, what are we in March? The theme for April will be released on April 1st for the subscription box. This is just any, a new kit that we have that anybody can purchase, um, on our website. But as a member of the subscription box um this there's a special offer on this kit for our members so make sure to check in the vip group and if you're in our text group the text group for the info on that because you don't want to miss those details all right and then i'm gonna end it Okay. Super cute. I'm really liking that. If, although I feel like my yellow needs more white. Yellow can be tricky to work with. Let me just say that.
that's if you hear that noise that's me um dabbing the paint off on my aluminum foil I don't know if that's really showing up correctly on my lighting. When I post the after picture, it'll look, you'll see it, you'll see all the colors and everything so much better. Okay, so now we have that piece done. And I'm going to go back with my, um, so we've done these two pieces so far, and then I will go back and do the, the paint marker here in just a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and do this egg here. And let's see how I wanna do that. I think I'm gonna go Oops. Okay, I dipped in the wrong thing. Okay, the other thing is with your sponges, you know, like here I accidentally dipped in the gray. Don't throw it away. We're just going to cut that off and throw it away. And now we have a new piece that we can use. Okay. So I'm going to do another blending. All right, there's my egg. Loving that. All right, we also have these little eggs. I don't think I want to put them on there though. Um, let's see, what do I want to do on the eggs? I think I'm gonna come back to those. Let's do this piece. All right, so your words on here are individual. So that's where I like to put them on the tape so that they don't break when you're um, working with them because they are fragile. All right, I'm going to show you a little trick. I always like to have baby wipes in the craft room. So on this piece, we don't need to worry about 
um, these score lines because they are just a guide for you to go and put your words after you paint it to line them up. So it's okay if the paint gets in there, you're still gonna be able to see through it. So I'm gonna use a baby wipe to apply my paint. Now the baby wipe works really good if you want a stained look, then you would use a little bit less paint and it would give it as if you just stained it. This scenario, I'm gonna do a few coats of a little bit thicker paint. To coat it. Now you can also do this for one coat and then go back and go back and then paint it with a paintbrush because like I said white sometimes you have to do several coats especially if you're using a watery paint. Some paints out there, some of the acrylic paints tend to be more watery than the others so you have to be careful with that all right so I'm gonna set that aside and let that dry because I'm gonna have to go back and do another coat for sure all right then let's see what color do I want to paint this um I think I'll do I think I'll do the green Thank you again, whoever just ordered. I appreciate it if you're on here. All right, so I did two colors of green and I'm gonna have to get off here in a minute because um, we have company over, and that's what I was waiting for. But um, and I knew I was not going to be able to be on the whole entire time to craft this. But you have an idea of how it's all going to come together. And then I will show you what it looks like when I take a picture in the end when we are when I am all done. But let me dab these really quick so they can dry. When they knock on the door, I'm gonna have to go. So, in just like a second. But all of these, um, this kit can be found on our website, rusticglitter.com. It should be linked below. And like I said, if you're a member, check your, check the details. I'm gonna have to grab a little bit darker. Um, purple too because it's not it's not showing up so all right so I'm going to finish this there's my doorbell um so I'm going to finish this um later this afternoon and then I will post a picture but you can grab this um on our website this kit and our other Easter kit that we have from last year that's been super popular as well so we kept both of them because you could put them together um and that's it. So you can go online and check all of that out. So thank you all so much for um, watching. Well, um, 
I crafted this project. I appreciate everyone being here. Y'all had some really, really great questions. And um, maybe I'll, when I do this later, maybe I'll come back live and I'll finish it. We can finish it together. So we'll just see what time that is. If it's really, really late, then it'll have to wait, but we'll see. We'll see what time it is. Um, okay, that is it. And I will um, either see y'all later or check for the finished picture because it's going to come together so cute, especially after I add in the detail with the markers for the little highlight line. So I will see y'all next time. Bye.